بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو نیوز روم آئی ہوسٹ ماں خالد بٹ اٹ از ٹوینٹی فورتھ آف اکٹوبر ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی فور اینڈ دیز آر دی Uh, trying to get more detail of during the course of the show. We'll begin with the 77th founding day of Azad Jammu in Kashmir. It was today that uh, the Kashmiris uh, got rid of the Dogra rulers and finally got an independent state for themselves, that is Azad Jammu in Kashmir. But unfortunately, the Indian side of the Kashmir still is under subjugation and still, despite numerous uh, United Nations Security Council resolutions, uh, uh, that continue to be remain unimplemented. Uh, Uh, remains one of the biggest issues that plague the United Nations, that plague the world as well. Uh, whereas on the one hand, we commemorate, we observe the 77th founding day of Azad Jammu and Kashmir. At the same time, our hearts bleed because of what is happening to the people in, in illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. We'll be highlighting more of that in our first segment. Our second segment, ladies and gentlemen, concerns uh, World Polio Day. On the one hand, we have the World Polio Day today. On the other hand, we also have a uh, rise in the number of cases of polio in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. In fact, these are the only two countries left where the cases of polio are present. Uh, Pakistan is doing all it can uh, in order uh, to, uh, you know, uh, completely eliminate polio uh, from its country. Uh, but time and again, uh, these uh, cases resurface. Why is it? Is it because of parents who are unwilling to uh, give the polio drops to their children? Are there other issues at hand? Is there an, uh, a lack of understanding amongst the parents or among certain communities about the importance of the uh, vaccines uh, for uh, poliomyelitis? This and more will be discussed in our second segment. Then we are going to talk about uh, artificial intelligence that has reduced human wildlife conflict in recent years in Gilgit, Baltistan. Now, this is with the WWF that uh, a new mechanism through the AI has been brought into place that uh, has resulted in the conservation of the snow leopards amongst the others and I think it's a step in the right direction. Finally, we'll be talking about the New Zealand airport that has imposed a three-minute limit on farewell hugs. It seemed very interesting to me just when I was reading the news so I thought it would be also interesting to share it with you. Uh, now, this has sparked a worldwide debate over how long we have to cling for a cuddle at the airports. Thought for the day? Maybe. Let's begin with our first segment and that concerns the 77th founding day of Azad Jammu in Kashmir. We've been joined by two guests. Both are in the studios uh, uh, this time and uh, let me introduce them to you one by one. On my very right is our very esteemed uh, Farzana Yaqub, uh, former minister of Azad Jammu in Kashmir. Thank you very much, ma'am, to have joined us. Then we've been joined by Dr. Mujahid Gilani. He's a Kashmiri leader and, of course, one of our regulars, as is Farzana Yaqub Sahib. But thank you very much to the both of you to have joined us. Let's begin with you, Farzana Yaqub. 77 7th founding day of Azad Jammu in Kashmir is uh, uh, celebrated with great enthusiasm and a renewed commitment uh, of the commemoration of freedom from the Dogra regime on this very day in 1947. Uh, but it is also a very sad reminder of what is happening in an Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. But before we go to that, I'd like to understand uh, uh, from your perspective some of the historical background of this very day. Thank you so much, Omar, uh, about considering to talk about the historical background. What we usually get to hear is that uh, the tribals came and we completely forget that actually there were Kashmiris who were present there, uh, Kashmiris who had returned from the World War II. So these were uh, people who were already in, uh, uh, in the army, they were well trained. They might not have been very well equipped, but they were very well trained. And what the Kashmiris did was that they, they, they decided that they will fight against uh, the Maharaja. Before that, we also have to remember that Kashmiris in Sirinagar, once again in Sardar Ibrahim's home, all the uh, leaders of Kashmir from, from all the different parts of Kashmir, they got together and they gave their decision in July 1947 that Kashmir, the state of Jammu and Kashmir will be joining Pakistan. So for Kashmiris, it was a decision and we believe and we thought that, you know, this we have decided, our leaders have decided and so we will, of course, become part of Pakistan. Uh, but lo and behold, what we see is that Maharaja and uh, uh, Indian government, which of course uh, aspired not to give away Kashmir, uh, Nehru uh, himself is a Kashmiri Pandit. And he wanted to keep Kashmir 
uh, that is what it looks like because you know he never had the desire he took it, he took up the issue of kashmir uh, to the un and that was one of the reasons why you know our our our, our people who were progressing who were moving forward had to stop uh, when this issue was uh, taken up in the united nations uh, but but uh, hats off to all the kashmiris and all the tribals who got together mm -hmm. there is a jangi headquarter in a place called banjosa uh, uh, ravla court mm -hmm. and it is still there and there are names of the people who were part of uh, of this war independence war mm -hmm. throughout kashmir you will find mausoleums graves of these brave people who fought in those wars and uh, in that war and you know uh they they achieved the 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 aspired place of shahada so we must remember that it wasn't just people from outside everyone got together and that shows the unity of being a pakistani mm -hmm. that you know no one was thinking ke uh, uh, why would i go and help that person mm -hmm. or why should i go and help kashmiri no no one thought of this separation of identity it was all about पाकिस्तान का हिस्सा बनना है वी विल बी पाकिस्तान एंड दैट इज़ वाई दिस डे इज सेलिब्रेटेड बिकॉज वी वर नॉट ओनली सक्सेसफुल इन फॉर्मिंग द गवर्नमेंट ट्वेंटी फोर्थ अक्टूबर इज द डे वेन सरदार इब्राहिम बिकेम द फर्स्ट प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ आज़ाद जम्मू कश्मीर यू नो इट माइट लुक लाइक अ वेरी स्मॉल पीस ऑन दिस ह्यूज वर्ल्ड मैप बट बट द पीपल हु हु गेव देर लाइव द ब्लड दैट वॉज लेट फॉर दिस स्मॉल स्लेदर ऑफ लैंड एंड ऑल्सो दिस लैंड होल्ड्स अ लॉट ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी सो ऑन दिस डे वी रिमेंबर दैट आर वर्क इज नॉट complete we must carry on with the fight that started a uh, very long time ago and we cannot stop until and unless all of jammu and kashmir is liberated from the indian uh, army mm. from the indian clutches and and from the brutality of that regime mm. dr gilani how important in your point of view is it to celebrate this day not only with enthusiasm but also with the resolve to uh, uh, to continue to work towards uh, the right to self determination of the people of indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir does it not uh, give us a very stark reminder of that as well bismillahir rahmanir rahim uh, well yes um, for once uh, if you have tasted salt only then can you actually tell what the taste of sweet can be mm. and this is what we talk about whenever we think of azad jammu and kashmir it's like they have uh, they, they achieved independence they achieved azadi by their sweat and blood and this this sweet word azadi is something that we actually want to curtain over the rest of the state of jammu and kashmir as mm. well and that is what the people of uh, indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir are fighting for the past more than 70 years mm. so today's day that is the 24th of october definitely definitely not only for the people of azad jammu and kashmir but also for the people of indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir marks one very clear message that if you fight for what is yours that if you fight through blood and sweat for what you believe is claimed by your people then yes you can achieve your destination and that is what we see and find from the martian race of azad jammu and kashmir the same goes for the uh, for a message to the world as well that uh, the people of azad jammu and kashmir achieved freedom through the barrel of the gun that's very honest the people of indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir have essentially exhausted all their options and today they're fighting not only politically not only verbally but also by the barrel of the gun as well mm. the world needs to understand that if their demands that if their objectives and aspirations are not met are not heard that can lead to a catastrophic world tragedy tell me uh, 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 ma'am yaku why are the united nations security council resolutions still not implemented after so many decades of them having been passed unanimously because now we know of uh, resolutions regarding palestine that are not passed but when it came to kashmir those resolutions were passed but not implemented why well, at that time the context you know pakistan was a very important ally and that is why we 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 benefited from being ally of being you know part of ceto and cento so so those were the benefits that were received by pakistan and pakistan played its role really well in receiving the benefits and kashmir happened to be 
and still is the top priority and so we, we have so many resolutions from uh, uh, 48, 49 up to 57 mm. we see uh, continuous resolutions uh, which is a success of Pakistan's foreign policy uh, as well as uh, Pakistan's stature. Now, the implementation of those uh, resolutions, uh, it, it, it's like the buck is being passed around. India is really good at uh, taking the longer route, in keeping the process slow, in delaying any kind of movement that could be possible towards the final plebiscite that needs to be held. So, India, what India has been doing is that it's been dragging its feet. It mm -hmm. has been, uh, you know, they will come up with, with various different reasons. But having said that, uh, there is nothing stopping United Nations from playing an active role in re resolving this issue. And what we see today, we might not have understood why Kashmir issue is not being resolved. We might not have clearly understood why United Nations seems to be so selective. But when today we see what is happening to Palestine, when we see today how Israel is getting away with all kinds of brutalities, Kashmiris can understand, we, we the Kashmiri people are, are facing these atrocities for a very long time. Not only do Kashmiris finally understand the perspective that they are being meted out, the, the, how they are being dealt, but the world also is now finally understanding that when we say that our issues are not being resolved, that India is getting special treatment, uh, we, you know, we, we, we would be uh, looked at as if this was a lie or, or, or it's a farce and we're just coming up with, with something uh, which does not exist. But today look at United Nations. It, it, it is uh, a, an organization which is literally being killed by Israel. Uh, the United Nations workers, the frontline people who are providing aid, they are marked and being killed by More than by 200 Israel. have been killed so far. And then you see, look at India. It won't allow any international organization, uh, civil society, uh, international civil society organization, NGO, to visit Kashmir. You are no, now, you are people, GIP for it. They are not allowed to yes. go over there. Anyone who, who, who is taken to Kashmir, Indian mm. uh, occupied Kashmir, under the, uh, the, the farce that you know we are taking these independent people to come mm. and look, it is a guided tour. Yes, they are Remember not allowed the, the to move throughout that Kashmir. recently went in September. Yeah, that was a guided tour, tour mm. and even those people when they, uh, ha they, one, they don't have the guts to speak uh, honestly what mm. is it that they feel, but un in closed doors they will tell you that this place is like, uh, is unlike any other place. Mm. Uh, you have uh, stops where you are frisked and checked every kilometer. That is nowhere. The, mm. the, the, the atrocities in Kashmir are very specific and, and sadly as, as unique as Indian identity is, the uh, Kashmiri identity is, so are the Indian designed atrocities on Kashmir is very I specific. I agree. Now speaking of these atrocities, you know Amnesty International recently Dr. Saab took out a report. I mean and there have been so many reports in the past and we have discussed in various shows uh, with the both of you as well. Again on the human rights abuses and why nothing is being done. Why is nothing being done? Why is there a selective behavior? Uh, Fazana Saab has said a little bit about it but I would like your perspective also. Why a selective behavior when it comes to human rights in the Indian Hill Valley? Had it been in some other valley or in some other country I think the reaction would have been quite different. I totally agree. I totally agree with you, Umar, on this perspective that we must understand that perhaps, uh, in a way, the world is communicating to us that you are the children of lesser God. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever uh, uh, we look at uh, the two faces of the same coin, that is the oppressed Palestinians or the oppressed Kashmiris, we see that the plan of action or the map is more or less the same. Mm -hmm. uh, the executions by Israel in one way or the other and uh, the hegemony of India somehow both uh, look alike to us mm. whenever we look at both these countries. So perhaps uh, when we talk about the world not listening to us, yes, there is a bigger part. The world doesn't really execute when it comes to all these organized war crimes and humanitarian crisis that mm. is currently taking place in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. But all the same, I will also like to bring into your notice whatever the world has done 
after 2016. Have we heard of articles and have we heard of uh, different uh, newspaper columns in uh, New York Times or in uh, the other uh, uh, international uh, magazines of uh, Europe, UK or US? Mm -hmm. We haven't heard of them in the past 60 years or so, but after 2016, there have been numerous articles documented in the international magazines and yes. newspapers. And there have been international Leading reports. congregational mm -hmm. international congregational hearings on Kashmir as well. Then the Office of the Human Rights Commission of the United Nations and then different rapporteurs did present a report on the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. So once if the world has at least chipped in small amounts and small bits uh, in your favor, then you must think of whether you have actually used those reports to your benefit or not. This is where I believe that proper documentation, this is where I believe that the telling of stories of Kashmir by the Kashmiris, by sending intelligent and educated envoys to different impactful countries of the world, the movers and shakers of the world, I think this is perhaps where we have slightly lacked in a bit. All right. Uh, uh, Ma'am Fazana, I'd like to also come towards the recently held elections in the Indian held valley. Now, Umar Abdullah is the chief minister now. Uh, and he has maintained that seeking the restoration of Article 370 from uh, the BJP, he said this in a, in a comment some time again, was nothing short of foolish. But this said, he is, as we speak in New Delhi, he is met with Narendra Modi and uh, Amit Shah and uh, the likes of it all. What do, do you think that uh, the claims that were made before the elections, during the elections, and especially by Congress, but Congress is not really part of the government, nevertheless, that the BJP is not. But uh, it was said that they will do their utmost to uh, reinstate Article 370 and 35A or the statehood of the Indian Hell Valley. Is there any possibility of that happening? No. Uh, but we must commend the Kashmiri people coming out to vote. I, I get to hear that, oh my God, what is this? This is like Kashmiris accepting. The, the fact that Kashmiris came out in droves and voted, they did this because we wanted to tell and show BJP that you cannot succeed, at least when it comes to people power. Mm -hmm. You cannot. So this is Kashmiris rejecting RSS mentality, rejecting the plan that BJP had of forming its own government. Mm -hmm. You see, it did so much of gerrymandering. It made new constituencies in Jammu. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jammu also specifically where Hindu majority mm -hmm. constituencies were mm -hmm. created for one and only reason that BJP would be able to make its government in uh, uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Also, they, they, they gave uh, representation, scheduled caste. Punch has rejected BJP. Although mm -hmm. they, 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 they tried to give like, you know, they, 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 these were small bribes that were given to people, but people have rejected them re resoundingly. Mm -hmm. So one, I, 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 I highly appreciate people coming out and you know, when people say that, oh, what are Kashmiris doing? Mm -hmm. Look at what Kashmiris have achieved. Even in this day and age, we have clearly sent a message that India's hegemony, India's clutch, India's governance is not acceptable. India's plans are rejected. And so what, what we see is that uh, con uh, National Conference had and PDP, uh, these parties were almost irrelevant post 2019 mm. because of what happened. They had to uh, come up with this narrative that, oh, we will revive statehood. Now, what mm. does that tell us, it clearly tells us that people of Kashmir, Indian occupied Kashmir, they want this abrogation revocated. This is what they want and when they heard, they, they felt that you know this, this they, there is a possibility. We know that this cannot happen, mm -hmm. but at least the way um, Indian government was you know uh, bringing in people in, mm. in, in, in a large number at least that is going to slow down right. you see the statehood whether it is revived mm. or not and that to what statehood mm. there, there are states in India and then there was a special state of Jammu and Kashmir now uh, it, when Umar Abdullah and, and uh, PDP the Muftis when they say okay. that you know we will go back to the statehood now what do they actually mean but by you know, statehood ma'am Farzana this is a very long discussion and I wish we have the time to do that and we'll do that but the thing is that this is an issue that needs to be highlighted as much as possible 
as much as possible and this is what we do by inviting you people and this is what you do by highlighting your perspective of that as well 27th of october is also coming which is going to be observed as a black day in pakistan because the indian troops landed in srinagar uh, on this very day 77 years back anyways let's let's see what happens in the coming days and let's uh, keep our fingers crossed for a glass half full rather than half empty thank you very much fazana ikub sahib thank you very much dr mujahid gilani to have joined us let's bring us to the end of our first segment we'll be back after a short break stay tuned Welcome back. Polio myelitis. This is a crippling disease that we have talked many a times in the past as well. We continue to highlight this as well. Why? Because Pakistan and Afghanistan are the only two countries in the world that still have polio cases. The government does all it can through different uh, you know, campaigns that it launches more than once a year. In fact, many, many times a year. And people go from door to door to uh, you know, uh, put, give the polio vaccine. But despite that, there, is a cert there are certain uh, false or falsified myths around this due to which some parents do not uh, give the polio drops and as a result well you see cases of polio happening in Pakistan and also in Afghanistan to discuss uh, all of this why because today is a world polio day and we wanted to you know mix the two highlight the importance of world polio day and also the cases of polio in Pakistan we've been joined by two guests let me introduce them to you one by one and both are in the studios for a huge change a pleasant surprise uh, dr rana jawad azgar infectious disease expert i've been talking to him about covid many many a times and now he is for the first time in the studios at least in my show thank you very much dr sahab to have joined us dr hasan uruj public health expert and a regular guest on uh, health and other issues as well thank you very much uh, dr hasan to have joined us we'll begin with you uh, rana jawad sahab tell us a little bit about those uninitiated on how does polio myelitis spread and why are children uh, the affected the most due to this crippling disease i'd like to add to this uh, the rise in the polio cases in pakistan and the reasons behind these as well your take thank you very much it's always a pleasure to talk with you and i don't think it is my first uh, studio show with you but anyway uh, it's a pleasure um, polio is a virus uh, like uh, caused by a virus and uh, it's spread uh, by fecal oral route that means uh, um, it stays in your throat and passes through your gut mm. and passes out through your feces and someone touches that uh, are contaminated uh, with that feces uh, uh, and then you know touch his uh, mm. mouth or whatever or mm. eat something which is contaminated mm. uh, so that's way th the virus is spread that's the main way of spreading uh, polio virus uh, you could uh, it can spread by um, what we call the common source uh, like one person mm. infecting others mm. but that's the most common uh, route of uh, spread is through fecal oral route All right. uh, so when it is spreading not only you need uh, vac vaccinated kids mm. to protect it from yourself but also need improved sanitation mm. so you can't have uh, you know fully uh, saved kid if you don't have a good sanitation because uh, they are passing this virus through their gut and if that uh, feces is, is getting contaminated mm. through their water supply or mm. other uh, whatever they are eating or drinking is mm. it means there will be uh, more kids who are uh, will get that disease to completely protect yourself uh, mm. or your kids is complete vaccination all right. and all the doses. that is the only way out that's the only way out plus you need to focus on uh, sanitation also all right dr hasan roots 20 mm. cases have been reported from balochistan 12 from sin 6 from kp one each from punjab and islamabad 402 environmental samples have been tested positive for polio my, uh, my, uh, virus across the country uh, why is there such a huge increase in number of cases and samples in your point of view what are the factors behind these increase uh, firstly, thank you very much Emma, for uh, bringing me on board. Uh, you are very right. This year we uh, already we, we are in Aug uh, October and we have been reported 40 cases mm. and 70 districts are infected by the way because 402 s environment samples are distributed in 70 districts. And mind you that uh, one polio case can infect 100 to 150. Uh, the, the research says that if there's a one polio case, it mm. means that 
almost 100 plus or 150 children are having the polio virus in their body. So, in fact, the number is quite high. They might not be affected by typical polio paralysis, hmm. but they are going on in, uh, in, in a polio state like situation. Hmm. So, uh, so much of search has been uh, uh, noticed. Bec um, and if you analyze the data, it is mostly most of the cases are in the Balochistan, that is the southwest of Pakistan, hmm. and that is in border with Afghanistan. So, uh, Pakistan has been in a conflict situation for quite a, uh, quite a quite number of years, mm. decades rather now. Mm. Mm. Uh, secondly, there is a huge um, migration or communication between the people from Afghanistan to Balochistan, KPK and vice versa. So, I think uh, the viruses don't see boundaries. So, of course. so uh, humans and even adults are carriers. If the children are not being uh, t uh, being the transmitter, main transmitter, mm. the adults, you know that uh, vaccine is also given to adults when they go for Umrah. Yes. Uh, uh, what is the reason why, why adults are given? Because mm. adults can be carrier uh, in addition to the uh, less than five years of children who are actually paralyzed. So one of the main reasons for this upsurge, and especially in the area and the data analysis shows this cross border, border uh, communication between the two countries. And both of the countries are in the conflict zone. There's a poverty, lack of sanitation. Dr. Jawad, very, uh, very important point is mm. that this virus is spread through, uh, through water, mm. th through orofecal route. And that means that drinking dirty water or uh, not washing hands properly after the toilet and all mm. that, that mm. makes uh, uh, the condition conducive for the virus okay. to spread. Mm. So these are very important uh, uh, aspects. Just in addition to the vaccination, I think we need to stress upon wash, which is uh, water and sanitation, uh, uh, hygiene habits, uh, inculcate this in the community. And the most important point is community participation. If okay, I think there's nothing more important than that because when it comes to community participation, you see some darth in it because of certain missets circulate. And Dr. Rana Jawad Asghar, herein I'd like to ask, so many different campaigns, uh, uh, national, national vaccination campaigns that have happened this year alone in Pakistan. Another is going to happen in the next couple of days as well to vaccinate more than 45 million children under the age of five. If we have so many campaigns, why are there still uh, so many question marks a around their children uh, getting polio b at uh, parents denying their children uh, the polio vaccine because of various myths or reasons uh, that uh, sometimes uh, defy understanding thirdly i'd like to also un uh, understand that uh, i mean for the general public and for myself as well when is the right time to vaccinate a child under the age of five uh, because you don't know if the child has polio or does not. When can the child be actually saved from the effects of polio? So, you are correct that uh, every year we are seeing multiple uh, special campaigns uh, mm. where the whole country is uh, under five kids get the vaccinations. Mm. Um, and we call it uh, National Immunization Days or something mm. like that. Problem, and I have been uh, part of many evaluate teams uh, who are looking at uh, mm. polio uh, vaccination not only in Pakistan but abroad also. What I have noticed is that uh, the teams are missing the same pockets of unvaccinated children in every campaign. So they are vaccinating a kid who is getting vaccine um, in the first campaign mm. until like 20, that kid is getting like 20 okay. uh, doses of vaccine. Mm -hmm. But the pockets of unvaccinated kids are being missed and there are multiple reasons mm. uh, why those kids are make, uh, missed in each campaign. Mm. Uh, and yes, uh, you know, misinformation, misconception is one part and parents' refusal is, as a result of it. But that's not the whole story. Uh, many times our uh, preparation is not right. We cannot identify the new, new settlements where people are living uh, before the campaign starts. So what we called is proper preparation of your game plan is not done or updated 
or your war plan is not updated mm. Mm. regularly. So that's why you are not, the teams are not aware of those kids who are living at the peripheries of cities or the peripheries of districts. Mm. And it's not about just polio. These kids who live at the periphery, who are not part of the main settlement, mm. are mostly missed in each vaccination for every disease. So we know these are hard to get kids, but we need to then make sure that before we start a campaign, Hmm. We have done our homework well. So All that's right. one right. thing. Dr. Hassan Rooj, I'd hmm. like to rephrase the same question to you, but also like to add this something that I asked him, but he didn't answer. What is the stage at which a child, if given the polio vaccine, will survive the disease and not get it? So basically, medically speaking, uh, it is up to the age of five years, hmm. which you give a uh, child uh, polio vaccine a couple of times. In the Western countries, it is given one or two times maximum, but in endemic country like Pakistan, we have at least at least one dose per year. Oh. But but the, having said that, we have so much of endemicity, so much of heavy reservoir of viruses mm. in Pakistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. There are reservoirs in Karachi. Mm. We have to get these campaigns done every month, mm. so that if the gut of the child is not absorbing the polio vaccine, mm. giving it again and again, it gets, the chances of absorption increases many times. So malnutrition also plays a very important role, mm. by the way. Malnutrition, water, sanitation. By the way, I would just like to reinforce one of the points which Dr. Jawad has said. We need to have, we need to revisit our strategies in, in the sense that we have all very good plans. Polio mm. actually program is one of the model programs mm. which can be replicated for other programs as well. But there are two important catch. One is that the vaccine is not, uh, the, our routine immunization, which is against nine antigens, mm -hmm. that is weak. Uh, in other countries, the routine EPI, what we call is uh, expanded program mm. of immunization, which has not only polio, but uh, pneumococcal and BCG and tetanus and, you know, uh, measles vaccines. That is a strong uh, uh, program in other countries. In our country, our EPA program is weak. So unless and until we make our EPA program strong, mm polio campaigns will continue to, you know, this is just a single vertical campaign which is going on. And, it, and polio vaccine is also part of that nine vaccines as well, mm. number one. Number two is that we have, uh, we have earmarked and there is in high risk mapping, we call it HRMP, high risk mobile population. But that has to be done every time a campaign is done because the dynamics in this country is quite different. People move from nomads and migrants and communication within the country, from Afghanistan, from other countries, is very dynamic. So you don't know that a community has come and settled in G13 and next time they are not there. Or a new sector is established and, uh, and people are, you know the growth rate of Islamabad for example is very high. People are moving here. Likewise, in Karachi, in Khyber Pakhtunka. So we need to map all these mm. high-risk mobile population every time we do a campaign mm. so that we should not miss any high-risk mobile populations. Mm. All right. Last question to you. We're a bit short of time. I was just told by my producer. So my uh, question remains that this, this polio is not just relegated to Pakistan and Afghanistan. We are hearing cases in Gaza, in Palestine as well. This becomes now a global health issue. And there are teens in Palestine as well that are giving inoculating the young children. But of course, because of the issue there, that is not happening. What needs to be done? on a global level, on a national level, uh, to eradicate polio by the end of 2025, as has been envisaged by the World Health Organization? So, um, uh, for first, uh, you, you can't do the same thing again and again and uh, expect mm. a different result. So, the whole uh, planning need to be changed. Uh, all right. And the uh, polio program has all itself identified that the ground feedback is not listened at their at the senior level at the all top right. level all so right. you need to hear from people who are working on the ground hmm. that what need to be done hmm. uh, and, we, and third uh, again someone has to take the ownership the real ownership of the program like if it's in pakistan we need to take the, the real ownership that means the strategy needs to be developed in pakistan it means that the leadership should come from pakistanis it needs the whole 
execution should be done by Pakistan. And I am 100% sure that if mm -hmm. we do it, if we just do it uh, like uh, the current prime, uh, prime minister did it for Dengue mm -hmm. in 2012 or 13, without any foreign funding, he was able to pretty much control Dengue for like next five years in mm -hmm. uh, Lahore. He could do it, but he need to really own it. All right. But of course, uh, as uh, our, uh, you know, uh, focal person of polio eradication, mm. Aisha Raza Farooq also say, says that this is a national priority agenda when it comes to polio. So I think this is a national priority I agenda and the priorities. Yes, please. I just to want to add uh, on, on the occasion of this polio day, mm. I would like to give credit and salute to the uh, polio workers and the yes, security so. staff who have given their lives. Actually, there mm. it mm. has mm. been mm. an historical event never in the history of public health or the medicine so many health care workers have given their life for an for an um, health campaign true so we bless their souls and of course and we give uh, we dedicate this day to them dedicate. and that that is what uh, needs right. to be done thank you very much to both of my eminent guests uh, dr rana jawad azhar and dr hasan Arush, to have come all the way to the studios and i hope we'll see more of you in the studios in the coming days as well uh, let's uh, end with our uh, two stories very, very quickly. Uh, uh, first, of course, uh, the artificial intelligence has reduced human wildlife conflict in recent years in Gilgit, Baltistan, thanks to a collaboration between uh, LAMS and uh, the WWF that has now resulted in uh, the snow leopards being conserved properly. Finally, uh, the New Zealand airport has imposed a three minute limit on farewell hugs, which has sparked a worldwide uh, debate over how long we need to cuddle in at the airports with our loved ones. Hmm. Maybe we'll think about that strategy the next time we go to an airport. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we come to an end of today's newsroom. We'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow with new stories segments that pertain to us, you and Pakistan. Stay safe. Allah Hafiz.